Hey guys, welcome back. Blades of God here from Hammer Bros Gaming. Today we're going to be covering Chapter 1 of Epic Tier 3 Engineer, which is to complete the game on the hardest difficulty setting. Seeing as how we are going to be covering impossible difficulty, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the basic mechanics of Dead Space, so we're not going to be really going over many of those. Um, but, as you can see, I already completed the game on medium difficulty and launched a new game on impossible. I would highly recommend that as soon as you finish your initial playthrough, start your playthrough on impossible difficulty, even if it's just to get the save file made. What this will do is allow you to keep your most upgraded suit from your previous playthrough and carry it into the impossible playthrough. This is going to give you extra armor, as you can see on Isaac right now in the cutscene. Uh, it gives you a 20% armor boost, but the biggest thing is that it's going to give you a ton of additional inventory slots, which is going to be a huge boost as the game progresses. I'm going to speed up the gameplay so you don't actually have to watch everything in real time. To about th the, It'll be played at about three times the normal speed. I will slow down the gameplay to regular speed at points of interest, enemy encounters, or anything that I think would be helpful to you guys. Um, also to note, this is going to be a cheat-free playthrough, so no stasis refills, no power no free power nodes, credits, anything like that. This is a legit playthrough with no uh, cheat codes used. So, <clears throat> let's get into the actual gameplay here. At this point, we're just progressing along normally, as the game tells us to, going into the security station for the screen. You're going to activate that panel and wait for a necromorph to drop into the room with the rest of the crew members. And be at this door, facing the door, and as soon as it opens, or you can open it, run. Because a necromorph drops in right behind you, and it can damage you if you're not quick enough. Another one falls into the hallway as you're trying to escape. Just keep pressing forward as fast as you can towards the end of the hall in the elevator. Get to the door, open the door, jump inside and hit the control panel. And if you're quick enough, you'll avoid taking any damage. Uh, you'll get a little bit of a jump scare here when the door gets pried open. You should be well familiar with that from your first playthrough on the lower difficulty. But ride the elevator down and get everybody's favorite weapon off the bench, the plasma cutter. Make sure you grab these two boxes here as they'll have some credits and ammo. Uh, there's two more destroyable boxes over in the corner. And then head over to this panel. You need to shoot the circuits to unlock the door. As soon as you open the door, back up because the necromorph in the hallway will attack you. So hit him in the legs a couple of times and that'll drop him and slow him down. Then a couple more shots to the arms or the blade arms, whatever you want to call them, uh, will take him out of commission. Head into the hallway, check the dead body for goodies, whatever he may have. It was credits this time around. And continue down the hallway. There'll be a med pack and an audio log right here that you can grab as you progress to the tram security station. Um, during the dialogue here, you're, you have the opportunity to raid some lockers and wall safes for additional goodies. As you can see, I have one stack of ammo and three small med packs and I have full health. Um, I would recommend as soon as the dialogue and guide or um, tip options are done playing, create your save. That way you're good to go, and if you needed to stop, at least you've got your suit save all set, and you'll be able to continue. Anyway, out the door, it's going to tell you to head to the right. Head to the left instead. As you come around this corner, you're going to see a necromorph lying on the ground. He is alive, so shoot him in the leg. That will That's a free, clean shot of damage. <clears throat> Drop, chop off his leg, then take aim at his arms. You can see that I panicked a little bit here because I missed my couple of shots, which panicking on Chapter 1, not a good thing. But there's some ammo over here. Most importantly, right by that save um, save station, there's a medium med pack on the ground in the corner. So make sure you grab that. Come out here through the door into the uh, bottom of the tramway here. Turn left, come down and get the credits, and then turn right, head back all the way down, and you're going to get your stasis module. Go ahead and stasis the door, head up the ramp, and just continue down the path as normal. The game's going to tell you to turn left. If you turn right, there is a stack of credits down at the end. The power goes out and I freeze just because I don't want to be jumped by anything. So I wait for the power to come back on. Head down these hallways. Check the bathrooms. There's always some goodies in there. Keep going. This little door on the right has a destroyable... Uh, I'm sorry, hallway on the right has a destroyable box that usually has something good in it. Keep heading down here to the tram replacement controls. Once you get up here, uh, refill your stasis and then... Straight ahead of you, you're going to have a necromorph pop out of the vent. 
Go ahead and abuse stasis in this room. Uh, there's three enemies total that you're going to end up fighting, but you have a stasis recharge station that you can just take advantage of. So stasis him to slow him down and shoot him. You can use melee if you want. You're actually going to see uh, when you when I go over to get this stuff here, another necromorph is going to pop out behind me. And I try to use physical attacks to put him down after chopping his legs off. But be careful, and I will warn that... Uh, well, you're going to see right here that I got in close to try to save some ammo and finish him off with a melee attack, and I paid for it because he whacked me pretty good. And he does, on impossible, they do, the enemies do considerably more damage, and uh, you're, you're going to be very, very hard-pressed to keep up with damage if you're trying to do a lot of melee attacks. You're going to have a hard time healing. So once you get the tram set up, or cleaned up, cleared off, cleared off, there we go. And the new tram car put on the rails. Come down here, wait in the corner, because another necromorph is going to pop out of that vent right next to the door. Again, you can use stasis if you want, because you got that refill station right up there at the top of the ramp that you can recharge your stasis with. This time I do successfully kill him using melee attacks, which is nice. And don't forget to grab this power node in the corner. Now, as a rule, when it comes to power nodes, I always leave, or I always try to leave, one power node in my inventory, because there will be certain doors that require power nodes to open, I call them safe rooms or supply rooms, and I always leave one power node in my inventory to open those rooms. Come back down here through that slamming malfunctioning door, refill your stasis if you need to, you're going to face two enemies here. So again, this is an area where you can really abuse your stasis, you have your standard necromorph and then what I crawl, call leapers or crawlers, I'm sure they have a real name but I call these little guys with the, the whip tails crawlers or jumpers or something like that. I'll probably call them crawlers, jumpers, or leapers throughout the guides. Uh, you can, again, take them down, take off their legs or one of their arms to slow them down, then stasis them and melee them to save some ammo. Uh, I, at this point, I knew that I was actually running a little bit low on ammo. I like to have at least one stack of plasma cutter ammo or whatever gun I'm using, one full stack in reserve. If I start getting below the one full stack of ammo in my inventory, I start to get a little nervous, but take them out, backtrack, and retrace our steps back up the ramp here, and we're going to just follow the in-game guide, go all the way back down here to the elevator, and take another elevator ride. So turn around, and as you come out the door here, you're going to actually be rushed by quite a few enemies coming from both sides. So the enemy that comes from straight ahead, you usually get to see you first. Um, and you're going to see here that I actually missed my stasis blast and started to panic a little bit. And you're going to have three enemies come at you at first. The one from ahead and then two from the right. And don't be afraid to use your stasis here if you need to. Just be aware you don't have many shots with stasis before you run out. So what I like to do when I'm facing multiple enemies like this is try to get them all in front of you in one place. That way, one stasis blast can hit multiple enemies and slow them down. Um, and that's what I did here, is I got them all against that wall, backed up the ramp so they were all facing one direction, and lured them all to follow. So check these boxes for additional supplies and ammo. Uh, I come around this way instead of going down to the right. Just, there's no reason, I just went that way. If you, when you get down to this little spot with the wall safe, be quick because you're going to be rushed by two more necromorphs. Um, again, they're all they're both coming from the same direction, so not that much of a challenge. Um, just take your time, make your shots count, and go for those leg shots. Uh, you're going to see this one. He was he was playing possum with me. He wanted me to come in close so he could melee me. But that's going to do it for enemies in this area right now. We're going to I'm just searching the area for additional ammo or credits. Take the elevator up, and when we get to the top of the elevator, you're not going to get rushed right away by enemies. But on that walkway, there is one live necromorph laying amongst the three. There's a total of three bodies, and one of those three is a live necromorph. So I hit the wall safe on the left, and I hit this box on the right. Grab the goodies out of there, and then you'll see I aim for the middle, the arm of the middle one, and or the middle body. And sure enough, he is a live necromorph. So make sure you make that first shot count, because that damage does count, even though it's the wake-up shot. Take him out, advance slowly because you're going to have another necromorph come out of the vent on the left once you get across this bridge. 
So don't rush in, advance slowly, take your time. You'll see the vent burst right there. And here comes the other Necromorph. So you know the drill by now. Hit him in the legs two or three shots to take him out. Drop him until he's crawling and then hit him in the arms. Pick up your, there's a text log along with a key and some ammo back here. I don't know if this is always ammo, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. So take your time as we retrace our steps because the vent on the right is going to give us yet another Necromorph. Drop him with a couple of leg shots. Then I, I decided to close in and use melee to finish him off because again, I was a little conscious of how much ammo I had left and I knew I had a few more enemies to face coming up. So once you take him out and he's dead, hop back in the elevator but be ready because when you go down the elevator right as soon as you hit the the bottom floor there's going to be a necromorph right in your face so be ready for a little bit of close combat and i use again a stasis blast to slow him down give myself a little bit of breathing room and just dismember him with whatever shots or melee attacks you feel comfortable using so once he's taken care of we're going to go to the uh, security station and pick up the control board raid the lockers make sure you grab that additional power node I make an unusual choice here which most people will probably question I go through both my power nodes knowing that there was no supply room here and I upgrade my plasma cutter and the air for my suit and I know a lot of people overlook the air um, air stat but it does come in handy later on once you're doing your zero G walks so I decided to just give myself a little bit of extra breathing room, no pun intended. So what you saw just happen right there, uh, there was one Necromorph straight ahead and one Necromorph to the right. I hung out in that doorway and as they got closer, the one from ahead of me, as it got closer, I backed into the door and the AI decided that it needed to find a vent to try to get into that room with me. So it, instead of charging straight at me, went to find a vent, gave me room, I came back out of the door, dropped him with plenty of space. This Necromorph, as you're heading back to the elevator, he's lying in wait playing possum right around the corner. Uh, you can hit him in the legs to wake him up, and you'll have plenty of space to drop him before he can get within striking distance of you. So once those enemies are cleared up, you have the board, you're going to jump back on the elevator, ride it back up to the next level. You're going to have one Necromorph coming around the corner at you as soon as you get out of the elevator, so be ready for that. I hit the save station just because, again, no penalty for saving, and we're having a good run so far, so let's hold on to that. Um, as you're walking down this hallway, retracing your steps, this blocked doorway has a thousand credits hidden in it, and I'm pretty sure that's the first time I ever noticed that. I've walked by it I don't know how many times when I've played this game. But, continue back into the tram security station, put in the security board, call for the tram for your friends on the other side of the railway, and then we're going to backtrack some more through the hallway that we came through already while we were listening to them bicker and squabble like an old married couple. Keep backtracking through your hallways. A lot of traveling right here. Back up the elevator that we came down and back to the room where we got the uh, plasma cutter. Well, through the room where we got the plasma cutter. And as we come around this corner after the elevator, you're going to see a necromorph walking to the left. He's going to turn around and come back at you once he hits the top of this ramp. Be quick with taking him out because there's going to be another Necromorph coming up behind you and you want to be ready for that because if you get stuck between the two of them, they can drain your health very, very quickly. So make sure that you're checking the bodies as you go of any enemies that you've killed because they usually drop something that's helpful. Now we're back into the main common area where we came in. There's a couple of boxes and then these little like cubby holes have... Uh, credits, ammo, and, and some other goodies in here. So just make sure that you check the a lot of the areas, uh, random areas, for goodies. Um, as we come back out to where you crash landed originally, another crawler's get, or jumper's going to leap over you. Take him out. They're, I find them probably the most difficult enemy to dispatch of because they only have really two obvious weak points, which is their arms. Or you can chop off their heads and it does very little to slow them down. So come down here, I refill my stasis because after you activate this lever, you're going to be in for a fight. If you go all the way across the deck of the ship and turn right, you're going to find a small med pack. So grab that. You can actually grab that right at the start of the level to give yourself a little boost. I just forgot to grab it. So as the ship blows up, you're going to get rushed first by two necromorphs, just the standard uh, 
a cannon fodder necromorphs, if you want to call them that. Take them out. I'm getting, I realize that I'm getting very low on ammo at this point because I hadn't picked any up in a while. Thankfully, that first necromorph dropped a stack, so <clears throat> I used the stasis and the melee to dispatch the second necromorph, knowing I had some space. After this, you're going to have one jumper and a third standard necromorph come in. Try to try to slow them down and make sure you keep your distance. We really don't want them doing the sprinting rush attack at you. I managed to time it up, so I hit the crawler or the jumper mid-air with the stasis blast and was able to slow down both of these enemies enough that I didn't run out of uh, didn't run out of space and was able to keep my distance without taking damage. This is probably the most difficult part of this first level, taking out these four enemies, um, because you're normally very low on ammo and health at this point. But we're doing all right. We're doing good. Hopefully, you're if you're following along, you're doing just as well. Follow the pathway here. Back into the common room, you're going to take the door on the left by the save panel. As you're going down the hallway on the right, there's going to be two bathrooms. Check there for supplies. Check the two boxes on the left for supplies. Hop in the elevator that came for, or that's waiting for you, and take a ride up to the tram. Now we're pretty much done, <clears throat> done the this first chapter at this point. What I would recommend is going to the store, and I only use two guns in my impossible run. I use the plasma cutter, which you start with, and I use the pulse rifle, which is not a very popular gun, but once it's upgraded you're going to have a very powerful weapon with cheap ammo and a very plentiful ammo if you use it in controlled bursts. So I buy a pulse rifle here. Um, I also want to point out that by carrying your suit over from the last playthrough, you don't have to worry about upgrading your suits. So that's more credits that you're going to have to put towards power nodes, ammo, health packs, whatever you need. I do, <clears throat> I do have a tendency to only keep a few med packs on me. I, I put most of the large med packs that I get into the safe from the early levels for later levels. Um, I only keep a few on me to leave plenty of space in my inventory to pick up additional ammo or med packs that I can store for later. I do buy a power node here and one stack of plasma energy and this will give me the one power node that I need to carry over in my inventory to chapter two where we will encounter our first safe or supply room that requires a power node to unlock. So that pretty much does it. You hop in your tram Hit the switch, and you are done with chapter one. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, next time, we are going to tackle chapter two. Till then, have a great day. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. You can also check us out on Twitch at Hammer Bros Gaming. I am Blades of God, and until next time, have a great day everyone.